What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023 Tips and Tricks and Hidden Features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now the first thing I want to do is show you how to get a battery percentage in the upper right corner on the Moto G Stylus 2023. Now by default, we do have a battery icon there, but you can't really get an idea of the exact percentage when looking at it. Now you can see the percentage on this widget in the home screen, and also when you pull down the shade here, you can see it up there, but I want to show you how to get that percentage up in the corner at all times. So what you're going to do is pull down the notification shade, then go to the gear icon right here to go to the settings, then from there go to search, type in battery, and then let that load. And then you'll see right there, battery percentage. So go there, and then go here, and then now, it doesn't matter where you are throughout the operating system, you'll always see the percentage up in the upper right corner. Now heading back over to this battery menu, there's a few other things I wanna show you here. Now the first one is battery saver. Now with this device, we are getting a very large battery at 5,000 milliamp hours, but you might find yourself in a situation where you know you have a long day ahead of you with no access to recharge the phone, or maybe you suddenly notice that your phone's low on battery and you don't have your charger with you. If that's the case, I can definitely see battery saver come in handy. Now you can enable battery saver right here, and then after that happens, it's gonna cut out some background tasks. It's also gonna switch the operating system to dark theme, and also limit some various network connections. So the phone will still work, however, it's not gonna perform exactly the same as if battery saver was not enabled. But in return for that, you'll be getting much longer battery life here with the device. So this is certainly not a feature that I would have enabled at all times, just because you won't be able to get the most out of your phone, but this is certainly there useful when you most need it. Now, in addition to that, if you do find yourself using battery saver at consistent times of the day, you can set a schedule for that. So that is pretty nice. And then also enabled by default, when battery saver is on, it will disable once the phone is recharged back to 90%. And then moving on, the other thing I wanna show you here is optimized charging. So just like any phone out there, the battery here with the Moto G Stylish 2023 will degrade as time goes on. However, there are some different things you can do so that the battery doesn't degrade quite as fast. And one of those is optimized charging. So basically, once this is enabled, the phone will recharge as normal up to 80%, but then for that final 20%, it will charge a lot more slowly, but in return for that, the battery won't degrade nearly as fast. So it's kind of optional on whether or not you want to use this, but if you are someone who really wants your Moto G Stylus 2023 to last for a very long time and for the battery to hold up really well, you might want to consider enabling this feature. Now moving on, the next thing I want to show you are some various customizations related to the navigation here on the phone. Now by default with this device, we are getting the traditional three button Android navigation. So we have the back button, the home button, and the recent apps button. However, this phone also is compatible with gesture-based navigation. So let me show you how to get to that. So you're going to pull down the shade here, go to the settings. From there, go to search, type in nav. And then you'll see an option that says system navigation. So go there and then go here. And you can see it does say three button navigation. So now that we're here, you can see three button navigation is enabled, but then we have this other option, gesture navigation. So I'll enable that. And then you'll see that the three buttons now turn into one line here at the bottom. And basically, if you want to go home, you swipe up. If you want to go to your recent apps, you swipe partially up. And then to go back, you swipe from the side. So overall, that makes a lot of sense. And I don't necessarily think one method of navigation is better or worse than the other. It really comes down to personal preference. So if you've never used gesture-based navigation, I do recommend at least giving it a try. Now there are some further customizations you can make related to this. You can go to the gear icon right here, and you can see that you can adjust the sensitivity, for example. But then another cool thing too, is that if you don't want this little line here at the bottom, you can actually hide that, and it'll still work the same, it's just that there's no line there. So that is another way to further customize that feature. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to take a screenshot with the Moto G Stylus 2023. And there's actually four different methods that I wanna show you on how to do this. Now the first method is pretty simple. All you have to do to take a screenshot is do the volume down and power button. So you're gonna hold those down for about a second. And there we go, it took the screenshot. Then from there, you can edit it, you can share it, or you can delete it. Now the second way to take a screenshot is to use a feature called three finger screenshot. Now this is already enabled by default and it's very simple. All you have to do is just put three fingers on the screen, just like that, 
and it takes the screenshot. So very simple, very easy, and also it works very consistently. So that's another way to do that. Now another way to take a screenshot is to go to your recent apps button, and then if there's a certain app you wanna take a screenshot of, you can pull it up here, and then just tap on screenshot, and it'll take that screenshot of that entire app. So that's also another method to do that. And then for the final method, this involves the stylus. So you can pop out the stylus. Then from there, you can go right here to this option, and then it'll take a screenshot that way. So those are four different ways to take a screenshot with the Moto G Stylus 2023. Now, if you're looking for a quick and easy way to access the camera app on the device, all you have to do is just twist your wrist, and then it'll pull up the camera app. So that's really cool, and that is enabled already by default. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is a feature called Flip for DND. So basically, by putting your phone's face flat on a table or surface, you'll then switch the phone into silent mode. So to check this out, we're gonna go to the settings, go to search, type in flip, and let that load. There we go, flip for DND. And that's not enabled by default, but we'll enable that. And as you can see here, you can turn on do not disturb by turning the phone's face down. So we'll do that. And there we go, you probably heard it vibrate there, and basically now the phone is in silent mode. And then, when I pick it up, it'll be back to normal. Now the next thing I wanna show you is the gestures menu. And in the gestures menu, in the settings, there's a bunch of different features. So to get to this, we're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear icon for the settings, then from here, go down to where it says gestures, and then you'll see a bunch of different options, and some of these I have already shown you. Now the first one I do wanna show you is called sidebar. So basically you can multitask by opening your favorite apps in freeform or full screen windows. So we'll go here, enable that, and then now you'll see this little tiny sidebar. So basically from there, you can swipe over on it, and there is a little tutorial as well, but you can grab onto that and move it around, but you get quick access to a variety of different apps. And you can even go here to access all the various apps on your device. So basically you can be anywhere throughout the operating system and get quick access to any app here on the phone. So you can also customize what's here, go to this gear icon, and there's a bunch of different customizations. So you can pick different apps and stick them up here. You can also place different tools in there and also contacts. Now while well in the settings area, you'll also see over here more settings. So if you go there, and then if you go to choose how your apps will open, by default, it actually opens the apps in free form. So you can have it open the apps in full screen if you want to. It really comes down to your personal preference. But let me show you how free form works. So we're now back to the home screen. I'm gonna swipe over here, and then I'm gonna choose the calculator app. So you can see it uses free form. So basically what that means is that the app is floating above the entire operating system. So you can do other things here on the phone while still having this app up here. And if you wanna make it full screen, you can just go up there, to stretch that out, you can also go back here, pull it up again, go to this minus button, and it's gonna shrink it down as a tiny icon that you can stick anywhere so it's convenient. So sidebar is an excellent feature that I definitely recommend trying out. Now with the Moto G Stylus 2023, we have a very large display at 6.5 inches. Now when using the phone with just one hand, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to reach all portions of the operating system. Now thankfully, Motorola has come up with a cool trick to address this, and it's called one-handed mode. So for one-handed mode to work, you do have to switch the phone over to gesture-based navigation. So I'm gonna go back here, then go here to system navigation, pick gesture navigation, and then you'll see we have the small line here at the bottom once again. Go back, then go to one-handed mode, enable that, and then basically by swiping down, it's gonna pull the whole screen down. So no matter where I am throughout the operating system, by swiping down, I can now reach pretty much anywhere in the operating system itself. Now, if I swipe down one more time, it'll pull down the notification shade, and then one more swipe will pull things even further down here. We also have a one-handed mode shortcut, so if you enable that, you'll see it's down here, and basically you can just tap on this icon to drop down the whole operating system so you can access everything in one-handed mode. And then one more tap on there, will pull it back up. And I actually just realized that you can use one-handed mode with the three-button navigation if you do use the shortcut here. So that is nice, so you're not actually forced to use gesture-based navigation. You can just use this button here to then access one-handed mode. So it really comes down to your personal preference. Moving on, we have another option called put display to sleep. So by enabling that, basically you can just tap on an area that doesn't have an icon and it'll turn off the display. There's also an option here called wake display. So going there, 
You can wake the display by either moving the phone or tapping the display. So that is already enabled by default for moving the phone, but let's try tapping the display. So I'm gonna turn off the display, and then now I'll tap on the display, and it turns on the display. Next we have swipe to split, so we can enable that, and then now you can swipe from one side to the other side to then do split screen. So let's try that out. There we go, it split it, and then now I can pick the secondary app. So I'm gonna pick the settings, and then now you can see the settings app is on the bottom here, and then up top here I have the web browser. And then you can also toggle this divider if you want one app to take up more space than another. Now heading back over to the gesture settings menu, we also have double press power key. So right now it's set to do nothing. However, you can have it launch the camera if you want to. So let's give that a try. And there we go, the camera is now up. There's also a quick capture, I already showed you that though. There's also fast flashlight. So turn the flashlight on or off with two chopping motions. So that's already enabled by default. So let's give that a try. There we go, the flashlight's on. And then now it's off. There's also lift to unlock. So if you do want to enable face unlock, you can actually use this feature to unlock the phone as soon as you pick it up and look at it. And then there's pick up to silence. So pick up the phone to silence the ringer. And then I already showed you this one, flip for DND. You flip over the phone and it puts on do not disturb. So definitely a lot of good things here in the gesture settings menu that you should definitely try out. Now moving on here, I wanna show you some display settings. So there's a lot here and I'm not gonna show you everything. You can definitely explore all the different options available, but we do have dark theme. So you can enable that and then put things in dark theme. Definitely helpful more later in the day especially. You can also go over here to set a schedule for that too. If that's something you find yourself using quite a bit. There's also display size and text. So you can make the icons bigger, the fonts bigger or smaller. So you can make those various adjustments. There's also colors so you can pick the saturation. If you want it to be more natural, you can do that or more saturated. You can also make things warmer or cooler. So that's nice too. And then this one's really important, display refresh rate. So by default, it does put the refresh rate of the phone on auto, but the phone is capable of running at 90 hertz at all times. So you can do 60 hertz if you want to save battery, or you can do 90 hertz. And basically with the 90 hertz refresh rate, things run very smoothly here. It just makes the phone feel a bit more premium when using it, and it also kind of feels a bit faster. And then the final thing I want to show you is how to get a dedicated number row here on the keyboard. Now you can see by default, we do have numbers, but they're kind of up top here on the letter keys, or you can go down here to get to the number row. But if you want a dedicated number row up here at all times, I'll show you how to get there. So from the keyboard, go to the gear icon for the settings. Then from there, go to preferences, and then you'll see that we have up here number row. So go there, go back, and then now we have a dedicated number row. Also in the keyboard settings, we have an option here for themes. So going there, you can pick the color of the keyboard. You can also have different images in the background or gradients. So a lot of different customizations here. So I'm gonna switch the keyboard over to green, apply that, we'll go back here, and then now you can see we have a green keyboard. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next one.